Hey everyone, it's me, Doomlink. Welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. It is currently part 11, I'm quite sure, of my Let's Play here, and it is the... is it the 29th? Yeah, it's the 29th of November 2016 as I am recording this. Now, I freaking rendered part 4 of this Let's Play, I don't know, last night? Yeah. And it just disappeared, like I've finished rendering the thing. Along with my update video for, I think it was... What, the 27th or something? Or the 28th? And it just disappeared, I don't know why. I just rendered the thing and I... I searched everywhere for the thing and I just could not find it. It was really annoying, so I'm gonna have to go and render that thing again. It's not a big deal, you know, but still, it annoys me. I will mention that if you want to, you can actually use the grappling hook to steal these people's items without actually needing to kill them. So did you notice how I got a Boko Barba Seed without actually needing to kill him? Well, yeah, if you want to just get their stuff without killing them, then you can do that. I will mention that you can only get their item once, so even if you steal it from them and then kill them, you will not get it when you kill them. And even if you try to steal multiple with the grappling hook, you will only steal one in total. They only ever drop one, regardless of whether you try and steal it or what. And here I am trying to, uh, I'm going to get hit by this Octorok. And the reason why I'm moving around all the time when I'm when I have the grappling hook out is because I'm just not used to not using the analog stick that allows me to move to actually like move the grappling hook aim point because you know that's what you had to do in the original GameCube version you had to use the analog stick that allows you to move to actually control that but not in this game so I just need to get in the habit of doing that like not actually did I just get hit by that freaking basketball I really don't like this business. So let me uh, hit back your stupid ball. Now I thought that he would go into hiding if you went that close to him, but apparently not. It's not the case anymore. So we'll go and shield your ball. So yeah, um, it's of course ZR to defend, you can see that written there. But anyway, um, let's do that. Then go flying. I don't believe that there's anything more for us to do over there, so we'll just continue on further through here. I think I found an, I found another tingle bottle or two after I had ended the previous video, and I was just like looking around. But uh, yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to find tingle bottles like inside dungeons and stuff. So that's a shame, I suppose. Just climb up through there. It looks like you can't climb it, but you can, so don't worry about it. I will mention that now that we have access to the Forest Haven, uh, once we pretty much finish this place, we will be able to access the Coloured Picter Box, because there are enemies here. Well, they're not really enemies, they're like, they're like glowing balls that we can actually put in bottles. And I might actually do that now while I'm here, because it saves me from having to uh, come back here in the future to do it. I'm just going to equip my bottle here. Now, I don't think it's these things. There's a bigger one, basically, that just hangs around, like a bigger glowing ball. And if we find the thing, and I pretty much know where it is, I know that there is one just to the entrance to the cave where that uh, Korok who makes you those magic potions hangs around. There's usually one there, so yeah. Where is that place? Well, you'll see in a moment. For the moment, I'm just trying to... <laughs> Let's say moment a few more times, but yeah, right now... I'm just trying to get some rupees by cutting grass, you know. See, Link is pretty much a a gardener, I suppose you could say. Well, maybe just a lawnmower. We'll just call him a lawnmower. Or a hedge trimmer, or whatever you want to call him. I mean, he just cuts grass for a living, you know. He doesn't actually need to... He doesn't need a job, he just needs to go around cutting grass and he will get money that way. I don't know who's dropping all this money around the place, but you know what, I'm not complaining. I'm benefiting from it, so... Last thing I'm going to do is complain about it. Oh, why Why is there money here? It's ridiculous. It makes no sense. Well, that would be ridiculous because then I'd be complaining about how I got my money. That's like complaining about your job. Anyway, well, complaining about your job. Who does that, really? Who complains about their job? Everyone loves their job. Anyway, I actually love my job, but, uh, you know, that's just me. Now, that big glowing thing over there, that's actually what we want to be aiming for. I did want to show you where it was in another location, but you know, as long as we find one of them, that's what makes, that's what's important. You caught a forest firefly in your bottle. 
A strange light emanates from this mystical creature. Yeah, well, we're not really going to be using that for a while, but I just thought that I would put it in my bottle now because I'm almost guaranteed to forget in the future to go and do that. So, yeah, I'm glad that I'm doing that now because basically I want to take photos of every single person in this game because I do plan to do this game 100%. I'm just going to put that out there. I don't really know what constitutes 100% in this game because they would have added a lot of things, I would say, to this particular version of the game compared with the original, so I really don't know what to expect in regards to a 100% run, but I know that a big part of that is doing the figurines, and so I'm definitely going to do that as well, you know. And Link does not look impressed by what's going on here. It does look a bit gross, I will agree. So yeah, this Deku Tree here, for those who played Ocarina of Time, may actually recognise this particular Deku Tree, because he is essentially the Deku Tree that was... Well, how do I say, you know, there was a Deku Tree in Ocarina of Time that I'm not getting any... Uh... Okay, what I might actually do is do a spin attack as well. But yeah, um, basically the Deku Tree in Ocarina of Time that is essentially born from a seed. Like, there is a seed that was planted, and, uh, like, by the old Deku Tree, like, the original one, and, oh, come on, oh, there's more of them appearing. Okay, great. Oh. But, yeah, that seed, and it was like a baby Deku Tree who appeared after we finished the Forest Temple. He looks a lot like this Deku Tree here. So, I would imagine that this Deku Tree is actually the older version of that tree. Which is quite interesting. And remember that it was when we were an adult in Ocarina of Time when that tree was actually young, so we never did get a chance to see it grow older at all, so yeah, just thought I'd mention that. But now we do have a chance to see it grow older. Much older. Blah, 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 blah. And Link doesn't know what the hell he's on about. Link is very confused and afraid. I must apologise, I was in error. I saw your clothing, and suddenly I felt a longing for an age gone by. That longing caused the ancient tongue to pass my lips. I am the guardian spirit of this forest haven, the Deku Tree. I owe you my thanks for your aid in ri oh, writing, ridding me of those foul creatures. Tell me, was it not the King of Red Lions, that boat who speaks, who led you to this place? Or the boat that speaks? So it is true. Then you have come here because you have need of the Pearl of the Goddess? I see. I knew there was a reason the monsters had begun to congregate in the regions around my wood. Now I understand it. He has returned. Ganon has returned. In this case, we must make haste. Koroks, little children of the woods, this traveller is not your enemy. Let your hearts be at ease and show yourselves. So these Koroks here are essentially the descendants of the Kokiri. They turned into really weird creatures, basically. You know how evolution works, I suppose. If you don't believe in evolution, then that's your thing, I suppose. But anyway, what do you call yourself? Link? Well then, Link, these are the Koroks, the spirits of the forest. Once upon a time, long ago, the Koroks took on human forms, those with the Kokiri, but when they came to live on the sea, they took these shapes. Now they fear people, but to me, they will never, they will ever be cherished. Oh God, they will ever be my cherished little children. See, I just can't read, apparently. As it happens, you have come just in time for a ceremony that the Koroks hold, but once every year, it, it is about to begin. I shall grant the pearl to you once their ceremony is complete. I must apologise for the brief delay, but if the ceremony is not completed soon, an ill fate could befall us. So, let it begin. Are you, are you ready, my children? But we are not, O oh, Deku Tree. Something terrible has happened. It is Makar, Makar. What is the matter, Linda? You and Makara are always late. N no, it's not that, oh Deku. I keep going to say, oh Deku Tree, but it's great Deku Tree. Makara fell into the Forbidden Woods. What? The Forbidden Woods? I told him to be careful, but still Makara flew above the Forbidden Woods, and as he drew close to it. Foolish little Makara. Link, you have heard all this? That's a weird thing. It would make more sense to say, have you heard all this? But he said, you have heard all this, I think. Either that, or I was reading that incorrectly, which was probably the case. But anyway, the Forbidden Woods are right beside the Hallowed Isle... Island? It's not an isle. It looks like an isle, though. It doesn't look big enough to be called an island. 
All of these islands, these so-called islands, are not really big enough to be called islands. They're all isles, in my opinion. But anyway, those woods, the whole region is a vile place that is home to evil beasts. And now it seems they have taken a child of the forest named Makar. Your presence here is no mistake, I deem. The King of Red Lions likely expects great deeds of you. It is why he brought you here. I am sorry to ask this of you, but can you go rescue young Makar for me? But great Deku Tree, people cannot fly through the air. Ah yes, thank you child, you are right. It is not possible to enter those woods from the sea, is it? Link, I would guess from your size that you are heavier than my Korok children, yet I think we may still be able to solve this dilemma. You must use the items I shall bestow upon you and fly through the sky. And he essentially just pinched out a loaf right in front of us. But it's actually a leaf, not, not a loaf. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry for my vulgar words. Anyway, hmm. Forgive me, Link, but could you climb to, up to my crown and get the leaf from up there? Yes, sir. Anyway, so at this point we are getting a new item that is not actually related to the dungeon itself. We're getting this item just to allow us to access the dungeon, so it's not like a mini-boss item or anything. We will be getting an item in that dungeon, but yeah. So let's just aim here. And I will mention that you do need to hold forwards to travel the distance required. If you don't hold forward, then you'll just literally fly up in the air and that's it. You won't actually move forward. But, uh, yeah, anyway, so, no, what? Oh, pressing the wrong thing as usual. There we go. So we'll do that. And we need to reorientate ourselves here so that we can actually swing into this next flower. It is required that we do this, otherwise we won't be able to get to this flower, I will mention. Now, even though this may look a little bit difficult to aim, the game is quite lenient, so... You shouldn't really miss these flowers. I think you can tell that they are quite lenient. You don't need to be super accurate with it. So we will land here and pick up the Deku Leaf. Plant your feet on the ground and use it to blow blasts of air at objects and enemies. You can also jump in the air and use your magic power to drift on the currents of the wind. I will also mention that the Deku Leaf is not able to create gusts of wind if you have no magic. The Deku Leaf will become, like, it, it'll basically be dead, like, it, it'll just be, like, strips of crap, and it just won't be able to blow wind if you have no magic, so yeah. Swordsman, over here. Please, you must fly from over there to here using your Deku Leaf. Alrighty. So now I can actually get rid of my, um, my bottle there. But the funny thing is, is, like, I don't have to actually open up an item screen anymore. I can immediately just look down at my, um, my gamepad and just see all of my items there and then I can just immediately equip them. It's really good. But anyway, um, what we're going to do is jump off here and press X. Because I do currently have it set to X, of course. But anyway, let us now drop. Hello. Oh, jeez, I didn't want to attack you. I apologize. Very good, Mr. Swordsman. You've already mastered using the Deku Leaf. But, since you're so much heavier than we are, you can't fly very far, can you? How unfortunate. Well, anyway, this is the exit that leads to the Forbidden Woods, where our brother Makar is being held. Please take care of Makar. Alright. So, in this grass now, we will have magic pots available to us. These will restore our magic, of course. Because I did just call them magic pots. I wonder what they do for us. Oh, I to tell. So, I'm just drinking again here. God damn it. <sighs> Alrighty, so let us continue. There is a person here. Well, I want I say person, but it's not really a person, but anyway. Congratulations, Swordsman. It appears you've finally gotten the Deku Leaf. That eerie looking island over there is home to the Forbidden Woods. Makara is trapped somewhere within there. You'll have to float over to the entrance from here using your Deku Leaf. But, when you're flying with the Deku Leaf, you're at the mercy of the wind. If the wind can't carry you there, you'll fall into the sea before you land. If only the wind were blowing in the right direction to carry you there. <laughs> well, guess what we need to do. We need to use the Wind Waker and blow it in the right direction. Uh, this way. <laughs> the reason why I said this way was that, you know, like, I was trying to use the uh, left analog stick to control it. 
I'm still not used to this whole business with, uh, wait, hold on, it's going in that direction? Okay, it must be southwest. God, this makes no sense to me. Like, it, I can't immediately go to the direction that I want to go anymore. It's getting annoying. Anyway, uh, so what we'll do is jump here and we will use the Deku Leaf to get to this little... Well, I don't really know what to call this. It's like a... I guess a tree. Yeah, it's literally a tree rising out of the water. So that's an interesting thing. So let's drop here and we will collect some magic from these magic pots. Of course, you do have two different sizes of magic pots and those indicate like... Well, basically what that means is that the larger pots give you more magic and the smaller ones give you less. But anyway, uh, what we're going to do is send the wind in... Hey guys, it's Post Commentary Doom Link here. You won't have to listen to me for very long. My audio just kind of shat itself a little bit here. Uh, as I'm recording this uh, post commentary here, it is the 1st of August 2017. It's like a long time in the future from when I actually recorded this. You'll be able to see the recording date in the description of the video, of course, as usual. But uh, yeah, I'm just editing through this here. And um, as you can see, I am catching the... Uh, well, the wind there, the uh, cyclone, the, this is not really a cyclone, is it? I don't even know what to call that, a wind vortex, and we are using the Deku Leaf to fly over to the Forbidden Woods, I believe it's called. And, uh, yeah, it's it can be a little bit tricky if you don't actually blow the wind in that direction. And uh, at this point here, in my original commentary, I'm pretty sure I was explaining how the... Um, the song, The Wind Waker, you don't actually have to play it a second time, like you select what you actually want to play and then it physically plays it. Uh, the original commentary is resuming now. The song will play and I'll, I'll demonstrate it, so... See, it doesn't actually need me to play the song a second time, which is interesting. But anyway, because the, and the reason for that is because like they do it with the ocarina, because... Well, it makes sense that they would keep doing that with the ocarina, but you have to actually play it in time. You have to play it in the time of the song itself for it to work with the Wind Waker, so... Because that's literally how it's designed, so... It's funny, so... It's just a good thing to mention, because, like, the idea of the Wind Waker is that it is in time. Like, it automatically plays in time, so therefore it's literally like repeating the song over again, so it's not necessary, so... That's an interesting thing that they've done. I do like that. Now, anyway, I don't really know how this dungeon will compare to, for instance, the, um... Okay, let's try and hit these people. I call them people again, I really need to stop calling them people, they're clearly not people. But anyway, um, I do wonder how this dungeon will compare to the Dragon Roost Cavern in terms of its length. In terms of its difficulty, it'll be roughly the same, but I just wonder about its length. I think it will be slightly longer. I was going to say that I think they get lo longer each time, but I do think that this dungeon is the longest of the first three. I think that the... Uh, what's it called? The Tower of the Gods is about the same length as the Dragon Roost Cavern. But I do honestly think that it will only take a maximum of two videos for me to do this. But uh, anyway, it seems that like I still have plenty of time, so I mean, I'm not going to end the video just yet. Oftentimes I will just like, end the video and then pick it up at the start of a dungeon, but to be honest, I still have, like, maybe three or four minutes left of recording until I will probably want to end the video because I'll be out of time, but yeah. Anyway, so what we want to actually do here is pick up this seed, and I will mention that we do have a limited amount of time in which we can use this seed once we've picked it up, because otherwise it will, I guess, I mean, I don't know if you can see it, but it's slowly kind of fading away. I don't know how long it takes for it to fade away, but I think it might fade away faster if you actually attack the thing. I'm not too sure, to be honest. But anyway, um, yeah. Some people do get stuck right there. It's a strange thing, but... Because uh, it's not something that's introduced into many other Zelda games. Now, that was very silly of me, what I just did there. I was supposed to actually fly with the Deku Leaf, but then... I, like, by the time I worked out that I needed to do that, I was, like, thinking, wait, how do I use the Deku Leaf? Where is that assigned to? And I just kind of gave up, and, yeah. Anyway, uh, these Boko Barber Seeds, as I kind of referred to before, or kind of indicated before, basically what they do is... Well, actually, I didn't really mention that. I mentioned that there was a Korok that creates magic potions, but basically, uh, to create those magic potions, you use Boko Barber Seeds. So if you give him Boko Barber Seeds, he will actually create magic potions for you. In other words, green potions. So, yeah, you can either use green shoe jelly, 
and give them to the guy in Windfall Island to make magic potions, or you can give the um, the Korok Boko Barba seeds, and he will also make magic potions for you. So that's just a good thing to mention. Anyway, I want to do a spin attack and hit both of these guys, or not. You know, you can go and hide again. Fine. I don't mind too much. Of course, this flower will uh, disappear when you go close to it. That's the reason why we needed to throw that big seed at the last flower. I didn't really demonstrate that, did I? But, you know, it doesn't matter as long as you... As long as you find out eventually, you know. And as long as you know, like, what you need to do, I suppose. You don't need to know why. You just need to know what you need to do. <laughs> anyway. So, I will mention that you can tell whether or not a flower is something you can jump into based on its colour. So as you can see, the colour of this flower here is a lot more vibrant, whereas this one is more of a pale sort of purpley colour. The vibrancy of the colours is how you work out whether or not it's safe to jump into. And I think a lot of the time, like, after you kill these guys, they will turn into a flower. But not all of them do, you see. Some of them do, some of them don't. That's just a thing, I suppose. That is, uh, oh, a fairy. Now, I think I don't really need that. Go to items, please. Okay, well, it, f it entered me anyway. <laughs> it entered me. Oh, the fairy entered me. Anyway, um, I'm sorry, that's very silly of me to say. The Devi mature sometimes, I think you'll find. Anyway, uh, I think we will use the Deku Leaf at this point, and we'll fly over here. We do not actually need wind to fly, I think you'll find. When we're outside, yes, we need to rely on the wind currents, but it's not entirely required that we have wind to be able to travel in the sky with the Deku Leaf. So I don't really know what is, what's at the top here. I know this is optional. I don't believe we need to go to the very top here. But we can if we want to. Oh, cool. So we've actually got a, uh, a bomb flower. I want to hit that and then get away. There we go. That's exactly what I wanted. So that just allows us to kill those guys without needing to wait for them to show their faces, basically. Because, like, when they're hiding, we can't actually hit them. Unless, of course, we have bombs. Now, at that point, we can actually make use of that. But anyway, um, I don't believe we can use that bomb to any effect. We might have to... Well, I mean, we can't use it to any effect uh, yet. Well, not even yet. We just can't bring it all the way down there to hit that uh, flower that disappears. But if we go over here... Don't hit that freaking leg. But anyway, just here, we should... Oh, no. Okay. Seems that we need to continue higher again. Oh, there it is, maybe? I don't really know where the hell I'm going, to be honest. I thought I was looking for one of those seeds, but maybe not. I need to be careful. I can't get hit by this thing. Let us cancel. And they've actually, instead of a shadow, they have like a special shining icon to indicate the fact, like, like indicating where you're going to fall. Oh gosh, we're still continuing ahead. I don't know where we're going anymore, to be honest. Where are we going? I'm heading down this way, honestly. Anyway. So yeah, I do like that new shining icon. Oh, nice. I'm happy to see a joy pendant there. When I see joy pendants, I can't help but be filled with joy. Anyway, uh, it's about time for me to end this video, I think, so I will see you guys uh, in the next video. Yeah, <laughs> anyway, um, it's a good time for me to end this because I am more or less at the top of this area. I might go get these rupees first. Because I do kind of want to see, like, what my max is for my rupees. Might be 400. It's probably 500, though. That's what I'm imagining in my head. But anyway, um, yeah, thanks for watching, everyone. This has been part 11 of Let's Play uh, The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker HD version. I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you in part 12. It is once again the 29th of November, and I am Doom Link. I'll see you guys later.